Well, hello, stampers. It's the Pampered Stamper, and today is Tuesday, which means it's time for stories and stamps. And I was thinking, what story am I going to share with you today? I know which stamps I'm going to share. I'm going to share the beautiful, fabulous florets, um, sweet, beautiful paper, two stamp sets, a set of dies. They are honestly one of the most favorite things I've seen yet this year. I just love the versatility of this set, and I'm really excited to show you a couple of cards and then a few cards that I've already made with it. And uh, as far as the story goes, I kind of, I wish you could see what my desk looks right now. It's, it's, it's just a mess. I've cleared up enough space to do my, my video. And I know that it should be clear all the way. And why is it that it's so hard for me to do that? Why is it so hard for me to start with a clear space? Why do I think I just want to keep creating and I don't want to stop to clean my whole desk off and have a really organized video. It's really strange. Anyway, that's the way I'm wired. And sometimes I do take the time, but more often than not, I don't. So anyway, we're going to, I'm going to muse on that as I create. And I have here, I'm going to move my Stamparatus. My Stamparatus is always on my desk. It never gets put away. Here are the, I'm just getting a bit of a glare there. I'm going to move that. I have a light. Oh, oh, it almost fell. I've got this, this, um, it's a round light. I, I, I don't even know what those things are called. It gives a good lighting for your face or whatever not, but we have a beautiful sunny day and I'm not going to bother. But it was super cheap at the grocery store. But the reason that it's cheap, it comes on a really flimsy stand, so it falls over very easily. Anyway, these are the stamp sets. So framed and festive is all for Christmas mostly. From our home to yours, you can do at any time. That's always a good one to send. And then this one is the framed florets. And that is thank you, um, birthday, for a special person on a special day. That could be anything. That could be engagement or a wedding shower or a job promotion. I like this one too. Just a little reminder that you are loved. I'm a huge proponent of Happy Mail that doesn't have an occasion. That you send a card and in Dutch we would say just so much, just because. So... Um, I'm going to open this up and see. Oh, no, they're right here. So I did make a discovery. There is this die with the hearts. There's this one with the little stripies in it. And then there's this big ornate one. Now, I have used the ornate one and I had used this one, but I hadn't used the heart one. And if you look carefully, which I had not done, all you see in here is hearts. You don't see another raised level. Well, guess what that means? It means it doesn't cut out ovals at all. It's just cutting out the hearts. So, take a look at this. I I just started putting this together. I wasn't really going to make a card, but then I thought, well, maybe I should. So this is what it looks like. So this is a card front, and I just put that at the top. I'm layering it over a very vanilla base. And then I'm taking this. Sorry, I can't quite get my fingers around it. This is so succulent, and I'm going to just put that in there. Now, maybe, I don't know if that other one is a bit bigger. This is the inside. Let's see. Is it? Or is it exactly the same? I think it's exactly the same. Yeah, so that's not going to show. Let's get that out of there. So this one goes inside. And then this is patterned paper that will fit right in there. This I cut out from the matching paper. And then all I thought it needs is, is a little hello. Isn't that cute? So that's a beautiful card with the hearts and it doesn't have to be for Valentine's Day right so you could mix and match this any which way you like so there's that one and then the next card I'm going to do and I will show you the paper I promise I've saved the negative remember I love to do that and I'll show you why we are going to do some embossing so I'm going to open this up oops and I need to emboss on this blue piece, okay? So what I'm going to do, put this in here, and then the blue, there, and I'll move my, oh, before I do that, well, I'll put that on there. I have my kit here. This is the embossing kit. So it comes with a tray with a little thing that you can pour all the powder back in. It comes with an embossing buddy. 
it comes with these amazing heavy duty tweezers. They are the heaviest tweezers I've ever seen. I swear it's made out of cast iron. So really super handy. And then a brush to clean out your tray. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take my embossing buddy. Now that's super important, especially on dark cardstock so that you don't get the little bits. And I'm just going, oh, never mind. I'm just going to take it out of there for a minute and just rub the whole thing. And I know it doesn't look very nice, but it'll come off. Afterwards, I'll wipe it off. So now I'm going to put it back in here. Oh my goodness, I'm making a mess. Why did I bother? Okay. Here. And I've also discovered that, and I don't know if you share this trait with me, I'm really hard on myself. Um, and that's probably something I'm going to have to work a whole lifetime to change. Okay, so actually I need this stamp set. Isn't that funny? I need this one. Because I want to write in there, stamp in there, have a merry little Christmas. So I'm going to lay it on. So, and then we'll close it up. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to double check if it's straight or not based on the grid lines on here. And it looks, it looks good to my best of my knowledge. Okay. And you know what I haven't done for a little while? I haven't re-inked my Versamark, or maybe did I? Let me check. You know, it feels pretty good. I think I must have re-inked it last time. If you find that your embossing powder is not sticking well, it means you need to re-ink your Versamark, okay, to make it more sticky. So tap, tap, tap. And then give it a nice press. That looks good. Looks kind of like a chalkboard now, doesn't it? So, and I'm just going to put this in here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm being so smart. I'm going to hold on to that like this. I'm going to take my white embossing powder and just dump it on. Give it a good flick. See, and now I'm holding on to this and I'm going to emboss it and that's with the heat gun get this out of the way i'm going to go and grab my heat gun for a minute when you are heat embossing you don't want to wave your your heat gun around you just want to hold it in one spot until it starts changing and you'll see that powdery turn into glossy there it goes And then I slowly move my heat gun so that it's all embossed. And then what I usually do is I just kind of tilt it in the light. Oh, see, and you can see that, that part, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but my C, it's not quite finished. There it goes. And I just tilt it in the light to make sure it's good. That looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I did spill a little bit here and didn't, didn't wipe it off, but there we, are, we go. I've got to move all my stuff. There's a lot of stuff on my desk. I should have cleaned it up. There's no doubt about that. Now we're going to take our pieces and make a beautiful card. Move my Stamparatus and I'm just going to grab a piece of paper towel and just wipe this off. Get rid of that dusty. There, it still feels a little dusty to me. Okay, so I have a card base. So this one is European, but I'm just gonna give you the, the if I was at home, I think I forgot to hit the record again. I don't know how much of this um, embossing you actually saw. So anyway, if you didn't see it, I stamped it with Versamark, sprinkled on white embossing powder, and heat embossed it. Okay? 
And now we're going to put this delicate frame on and I don't want um, glue oozing out. So what I'm going to do is take my silicone mat and put a little bit of clear uh, liquid adhesive there. And we're going to pat that down with the sponge. I keep a glue sponge in a clear bag. It's just a Ziploc bag that came with sponge daubers. Flatten out your little puddle of glue and then lay your element on the silicone mat. Tap, tap, tap all around and peel it off. Move it out of the way. This will just dry up and you can rub it right off. You can also wash it in the sink. Okay, so this is going to go centered. This is our sparkly um, specialty glimmer paper and it comes with uh, two sheets of vanilla, two sheets of evening evergreen and two sheets of gold. It's beautiful. Okay, then I'm going to put this piece in the middle. Now I have to be totally honest, I do find that that um, embossing buddy did leave a little bit of a cloudy effect on there. I don't know if that will go away completely. I don't dare, I think it will. And I don't mind the look of it. So I'm centering that in there. And then we're doing the same thing with this piece. And I still have a little bit of glue. Now this I could use, um, I could just use a bead. I don't have to use the sponge on this one because there's space. So I'm just going to do this. There. And I'm surprised, I did this with that glimmer paper and I didn't think that that little pattern would show through in the glimmer and it does. That nice little, I don't know what to call it, but there's little lines in it. And it's almost like it's engraved, beveled, I don't know. That looks really pretty. And now I have cut out three of these guys to go around. This, these, this die also comes in this set. And I don't know if I just want, and the evening evergreen picks up the evening evergreen in there. I think I want the green one to be on top. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I need my silicone mat again, and I'm a little concerned that this might be dirty, so I'm just rubbing it off here where I was laying that other thing, just rubbing it off. And it looks like, I always use this analogy, it's like when you rub the skin off when you have had a sunburn. <laughs> That's kind of what it looks like. But that way, nothing is sticking where you don't want it to stick. So I'm gonna just turn these upside down so, and we're going to do a little add to my puddle. This isn't big enough anymore. And I don't want to put these, I want to have a little bit of movement, a little bit of, that it's not all stiff and glued down completely. So what I want to do is just put the glue on the bottom part, not on the whole thing. So just on the bottom half. There we go. So we'll move that out of the way. I love the silicone mat. I have to say that's another tool that is on my um, desk a lot. So there we have this one. And then let's fix this one, the white one, the other one. It's going to go underneath here a little bit. There. And then the evening evergreen in here. And I see that there's a little piece stuck here. And I could tuck this under, I suppose. Let me get on top here. I want to put it under. There. That looks good. And then the last thing I want to add is a bow. And the bow is, I really, really love this bow. Um, this reminds me of linen, but it's actually, okay, we're still going. This is good. It's actually cotton. It's a really soft bow. And it just, it's just going to go over there. And I just love this. It's really nice. Um, I saw this card on the demonstrator planning place, and I believe her name was Kathy. That's all I remember. If I think of more, I will, I will look it up and give credit on my page. Okay. I'm going to put that down with a glue dot or two. 
and then we'll have to finish off the card in the inside. But I'm first going to make a second card, I think. So I press the glue dot on here, pull it off, and I like to have the bow on the side a little bit. So that looks really pretty, doesn't it? I think so. So we'll finish this card. Oh, maybe I should finish it right away. If I don't finish it right away, it won't get finished. So I'm going to grab my paper trimmer. And because this is European cardstock, I have a long piece here. And it's going to be 10.5 centimeters is half. So I'm going to take 0.5 off. So I'm going to go to 10 centimeters by 14.4. There we go. And then I have a piece of the pattern paper from the outside, and I'm going to trim just a little piece off of that. Maybe a half inch. And then that's just going to go in the inside of the card. And then I will leave the rest of it. I believe I'll leave the rest of it blank. Yeah, that's perfect. It's nice to use up your scraps of paper and put a little piece in the inside and it just looks so nice. Let's see. So I'm thinking of doing a contest today because I want to, I would love to sell a bunch of these sweets, get the whole sweet, then, um, then you get the, I don't have the little gold jewels yet, but if you order the sweet, then you will get um, the dies, two stamp sets, a pack of paper, and the gold jewels and I forget what the price is um, I'll have to look it up there will be a link but if five people order that then one of the five is going to win a whole pack of markers I'm just feeling crazy today um, and I'm also kind of doing an experiment to see if people actually care about contests now mind you in order to um, to win this you have to be able to order for me so you have to live in Canada and you will have to pay for the shipping of the markers okay that's it unless you're local and you can pick them up I can't afford to give you the markers and pay for shipping okay so order for me today and you might go home with a big case full of markers isn't that just beautiful okay one more and for this card, I am combining, let's take a look, oops, I'm doing the gold and I'm not sure yet if I want to use the gold, but just keep this in mind, I have this too. So someone was asking about my creative process and I think it was Raylene. And I have to say that the key is to play. The key is to, and my messy desk I think is a key as well, um, because I'm just going to lay this on here because I don't have to color all the berries. So I'm going to... My cherry cobbler is really messed up. I have trimmed the, the, the tip. It's a real mess. I've ordered new ones at home. And I'm not sure. I think I'm going to have to color with the other end. I don't dare use that messy tip unless it's really big coloring. So you can color these berries. Now... I've seen people do this and I haven't done it myself and I think it's trickier than you think because um, yeah, this tip isn't good either. I've used these colors a lot so I decided, you know what, I deserve new friends. So this just changes it. I love it with the white berries, I really do, but I think that the red berries are also gorgeous. So that's what's nice about... Um, about changing it into red berries. You can do both. Now, the thing with the blends on the pattern paper is that it does, it is quite forgiving when you color on dark paper. Because you know, usually when you color circles, it's really easy to see when your circle isn't quite a circle. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy that it's not as bad as I thought it would be. The trick is to kind of make little, to go slowly around your edges and I'm just blending in a little bit of the light to give it a bit more shading. It's really beautiful, actually. I'm quite impressed. 
then I'm going with the dark cherry cobbler where it's been shaded with a very light soft succulent. And I'm, you can see that I'm doing one berry at a time. You don't want your ink to dry too long and to soak up, then it won't blend as well. And just go over the dark and pull it in. And it, it's just really lovely. Don't be afraid of blends. They are the easiest way to color. And they're just magical. They really are. I love them so much. So yes, I am, in case you're wondering, I am continuing my business in Canada while I'm living in Holland. Um, in Holland, I'm really not doing anything with my business. Of course, if people want to order for me, I would love that um, or join my team. But I'm not doing classes here yet because I just don't have time to keep my business in Canada going with my regular videos and, let's see, and trying to do something here. So I just, you know what, I'm not superhuman. And um, I'm just hoping the way my business model is going right now is that I don't offer all these classes by mail. I haven't found them to be super effective, not for me for some reason. So I do offer one a quarter. So that means one every three months. And for the most part, I'm just hoping that people watch my videos and then click on the links and just buy what they need because they've been inspired by my videos. So if that's you, trust me when I say I do need you. The life of a small business person is you need to be resilient. Like there's only so many things that you have to know how to do. It's not enough just to make a pretty card. You have to know how to market it. You have to do all the back stuffing behind so that when you post it on Instagram or on, on your blog that people can find it in a search engine and you have to take your pictures and you have to make sure you do it in the right light. You need to edit them. You need to add your watermark. You need to have your Stampin' Up! logo. There's a lot of stuff besides just making cards. And um, I don't mind it, although I wish I could just make cards and not have to do the other stuff. It'd be nice if I could afford someone to do all the other stuff and I could just do the videos and make the cards, but that's not life. And um, so I'm just going to keep doing this. I hope it's um, not boring you. Um, yeah, so back to my messy table and why there's something in me that just doesn't want to take the time to clean the desk off before I get started. It's, um, it's kind of crazy. And then I had an experience on the weekend that has really made me think. And I, I, there's all kinds of, you know, it's a, it's a complicated layered thing. But Gerard had a work party from his, um, the trucking company that um, brings all his flowers to the market, to the flower auction. And we were invited. And there was like free food and drinks, open bar. There was a live band. And it was held actually at the flower auction in a pretty big space and it was lovely and decorated. But I would say there must have been at least a hundred people or so. And I knew maybe three people. And there is a the band is loud. Now Gerard says it wasn't as loud as it as it could have been, but loud enough that you really couldn't comfortably keep a conversation going with more than one person at a time. And you'd have to be shouting at each other to hear. So Admittedly, that is not my favorite type of party. I don't like it if I don't like having to shout. But I was super stressed out and stressed out to the point where I was on the verge of tears. I honestly thought I was going to make a fool of myself and break down and cry at this party. And I thought, what is wrong with me? This is such a strong, visceral response. So I'm trying to figure it out. And I, I told Gerard, you know, it's at these things, that's the only time when I'm in Holland that I feel like I don't belong. Like, I think, what am I doing here? And that feeling is very frightening. And I, for some reason, I feel unloved, which doesn't make any sense at all. But it's just um, an alien environment to me. And, it, it's, and, and every time I go to one of these things, I react more strongly. Um... So we've decided that I'm either just going to make a brief appearance at these events and just stay for a little while and then go home and pick them up later. Because I don't like to send them to these things alone. But I also don't want to sacrifice my own mental health 
put myself through this. So I would love to hear from you guys and insights on this. I think when it's your second language, it makes a difference too. It's harder to understand. Um, and it's, yeah, because I am really an outgoing person. I don't mind meeting new people and talking to people I don't know. But anyway, that's my very, very intimate sharing of what happened on this weekend. So, and then my daughter sent me something and she said, well, she sent me this, this video on, on Instagram and she said, and in the video it said, are you, you know, when you're feeling emotionally um, overwhelmed, you have to ask yourself, how old do I feel right now? And then they think she, this person thinks it's a trigger from when you were younger. So take a look at this. Now we're going to put this on a evening evergreen vase. Isn't that beautiful? Those berries are gorgeous. Um, yeah, it's not, this isn't meant to be a therapy session, but it is interesting, isn't it? To talk about these things. Oh, look at that. See the, the blends go right through. So you have to make sure that you do this on a surface. Don't do it right on your beautiful desk. You might ruin a nice piece of furniture. Okay. Super important to know. So here we have the vase. And I've only got a small little border going around here. Okay? And now I have to decide whether I want gold. Gold is really festive with the red. And then do I want the red in there? See, I'm not a big fan of red and gold. But I wasn't sure if I should pop in the green. Is that too many colors going on? I kind of like it. And then the last thing I was going to add to it is some gold leaves, which now for some reason, oh yeah, here they are, gold, like so. And then we'll put a um, Merry Christmas in the middle. So I want to use my template again, but in order to do that, I first have to glue the this one to my cherry cobbler because I don't have the template for that little oval. Well, I probably do somewhere, but I want to use the one I already have all ready to go just to show you how it works. So I'm just centering this. There. The nice thing about using liquid glue is that you can ease things around. So now I'm going to put this in. That out of the way. And that one. And then this. And now I'm going to take this so tight into the corner like this. So, and then let me check. That's great. I'm going to use, I'm going to turn this this way. I'm going to use Evening Evergreen because that's the color in the background of the paper. And I want it to be dark enough. I want that to be a good contrast between the soft succulent and the evening evergreen. So just in case you missed what I said earlier in my video, if you live in Canada, then I will have a link below to get this whole suite. If I have five people buy the suite today, then you could win the whole pack of markers. It's called Many Marvelous Markers. I think it's worth like 160 bucks. It's a huge prize. I must be crazy. So here we go. We're going to just do that again. See how nice it's... It looks really terrible with that blushing bride in the background. So trust me, that's not going to happen. And I'm still not sure about the color combination, but we're going to see how it works. So we're going to start with this. I'm going to close up my evening evergreen. We're going to find our silicone mat because we need that again. Yep. Here we go. Silicone mat. You know, I could just flip it, but this is how all the, the gunk, just see, it just comes into a ball of glue. If you were a kid in school, you probably made glue balls too, didn't you? I'm trying to say my garbage can is not beside my desk. So don't throw it on the floor, Jackie. That is not a good idea. A little bit of the puddle. And then the glue sponge. 
tap, tap, tap. And then bring that like so. There. Move that out of the way. Oops. Yeah, make sure my card is ending. I, I, I did way more berries than I had to do. I got carried away. Oh well. There it is. Anyway, you got to see what they look like. They do look very beautiful, if I say so myself. So here we're going to put that in the opening. So I just love the way these frames um, layer together. And they I will share on my blog today, a lot of people have... Um, still going yes a lot of people have paired with these frames with beautiful embossing folders and that looks really nice too so check out my blog today the pampered stamper.com and you're gonna see some pretty cool stuff that I'm gonna share from other people because you know what there's only so many cards that you can make yourself there's only so much time in a day so I like to share other people's work as well because then they get some credit and they get some people coming to their blog there. And then I don't know if I want to throw in a green one or not. It does add to the look, doesn't it? It does tie in. Yeah. There. It's amazing how far this um, Tombow adhesive goes. There, and then we're going to add a bow, a gold bow. Now, we've got a beautiful card, don't we? We could add some gold um, bling, but I don't have the ones that match. The ones that match are beautiful. Um, I have these, and they are called Gilded Gems. They're nice, too. So if you can't, if, if for some reason it sells out and things might sell out or might not be available. When I bought the suite, they were not available, those gold gems. There. So now I think it's looking quite interesting. The light has changed, so I'm sorry about that. I'm sitting a little bit in shadow here. But there's card number one. And then here's card number two. Oh, and I was promising to show you the ones that I made with the Christmas paper. I will do that. So here are the cards that I made with the Christmas paper. And I did change them up a little bit. I fussy cut a poinsettia on here. Um, but you can see all the layers and how beautiful it is. And how nice the sayings are. These are the cards that we're going to be making at my um, Save Your Sanity stamp camp in uh, December, December 7th. You can also get a kit in the mail if you like. It's sixty dollars, five cards, and wow, the light is changing. There. And then also I have these, and this is a sidestep card. And then with the paper, isn't that beautiful? And that paper, this this is a die cut that cuts the flowers out of the paper as well. So I am in love with this bundle. And here's another one. Oh, and this one I didn't finish off the inside yet. It's a good idea to finish your cards right away in the inside, otherwise you don't get around to it. So the last thing I want to do with you now is share the, what the paper looks like. Okay? So we started with this. This is, I just have this all sitting in a mess here, but even like I'm asked how am I inspired, even by seeing the paper just laying here, and I think, oh, that gingham looks really nice. Does that work with this? Um, I spread all the stuff out on my table to see what works with what. And like this doesn't go with that, obviously, but it does go with this. But does it go with this? And you know, it's just really interesting to just play. So we have that. And then there's a die that cuts out that flower too. So there's the other side. See, that goes really well together. And then see, those three together, beautiful. So this is where I fussy cut some of the flowers from. And some of the flowers have to, this, this is cut with the die, and then this is cut by hand. So 
This is another really pretty print. Oh, and that's the gingham on the other side. This is what I used for my one card today. So you can see that it is really lovely paper. There's the paper in shades of blue and green, and then there's paper in shades of pink, um, blushing bride. See? So you can use the paper that speaks to you the most. And there, that goes together well. And that on the other side. And then we have this blue. So that is it for today, people. I am so happy that you joined me today. I had a lot of fun making this video for you. And now I'm going to convert this into a blog post so that you can see um, all the other wonderful things that other demonstrators have made. I would appreciate it if you clicked on the red subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner. Um, it's really nice to see my YouTube channel growing. I am so happy to stay in connection with you. I love our Stampin' community. I love it. I love hearing from you. Your comments are always... I try to respond to every single comment on my YouTube videos and on my Facebook um, on my Facebook posts as well. I am having trouble with my Pampered Stamper business page on Facebook. So I have started a new group called the Pampered Stamper Favorite Finds. And I try to post my videos on that group because then I can see and respond to all the comments. I could no longer do that on my, on my Pampered Stamper business page. So while I go live on that page, I will not share other videos because it's really awful knowing there are comments and I can't see them. Because the last thing I want is for you to think that I'm, I'm disregarding you, that I'm ignoring you. That is not a good feeling. So that's not going to happen. All right, guys, have a super day. Happy stamping. And I really hope that you order this gorgeous, fabulous Florette uh, suite today. And maybe you'll win the markers. All righty. Bye.